know what that the means. cell phone. Hello, everyone. Seven fifteen. That means it's time to paint. So, as let's introduce everybody. Come up here, gentlemen. Yep, you too. You have to come. The man behind. crew. The man crew. The man crew. Oh, uh, Amy said you did a great job packing her order. It might have been oh, a thank you. Too familiar <laughs> with me today. <laughs> I was on the table. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to Let's Make Art. Today we are painting this wonderful uh, bluebird. But before we get started, we're going to introduce everybody. And um, so right here we have Misty. She's painting today. Hey, Misty. Hi, hi Misty. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> Jake's doing camera work. Jenny's painting with us again. And this is my husband, Michael. Woo! He's doing uh, camera work today. And this is Casey. He usually does camera work, but we are bringing in him to do some painting today and he packed your order and he packed your order so if you have supplies Casey packed it he does an awesome job and Al's doing some camera work Andrea is painting today so welcome everybody and Sarah Cray oh yes Sarah I'm Sarah Cray. Sarah Cray thank you thank you thank you very much okay <laughs> thank you thank you thank you very much all right so uh, we're going to do some warm-ups today but um, let me introduce the colors that we're going to use. So we're using um, five colors today, but um, the watercolors are the Dr. P.H. Martin, of course, because they're my favorite and they're beautiful and the colors are so gorgeous. So we have daffodil yellow and we're using two different kinds of blue. And the reason why I'm doing two different kinds of blue is um, I want you um, to get familiar with using different shades so you're not only adding black because when you used um, like a different shade of blue like the slate blue we're going to use for, for some dark blue areas instead of adding black and it just brings a little bit more to your painting and it doesn't flatten it right away because sometimes black does that. So we have Norway blue, slate blue, black, and daffodil yellow and then when we do some detail work we're going to use our bleed proof white. All right. You guys ready? I'm so ready. All right. I love this birdie. Well, let's start with some warm-ups. Okay. So grab a brush, any brush you want. I'm going to do, I'm, I'm using a six right now, but whatever size you feel comfortable. And we're going to start um, with doing our value change. So we're going to start with going dark and then using just water to lighten it up. So get your brush, get it wet. Now for me, I always dab the edge of my cup to take off a little bit of water so it's not like soaking or dripping. Um, and then I'm going to grab some color. This is slate blue that I'm grabbing here. And you're just going to um, put a couple marks down, a nice thick area. And then you're going to rinse your brush completely and just use clean water to spread out that color. So the goal here is to go from super dark to super light. When, when you spread, you hit it against the side too? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Ooh. And then start from just the edge or this edge? So we're going to start, I'm going to bring Casey's over. That's a good question, Casey. So uh, I like to leave this part alone because we want this part to be the darkest. So when okay. I add my water, I do it from here. That edge, okay. That edge, right. So then that way this stays untouched. Okay. And so hopefully that will be our darkest or um, darkest value on that paper. Okay. So do that a couple times um, just to get familiar. If you're uh, want to play around then you can maybe do because maybe you've done this a couple times with the warm-ups so see if you can go from dark so really dark to light back up to dark what? so just take that water and spread it and then kind of do it on the opposite side so do it the other way here. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you just want to do it one way, that's good too. But just for those who want a little bit more practice, see if you can go dark to mid to light to mid to dark. Like flames? Like flames? <laughs> Is that what that looked like? <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of cheated. I went from dark to light. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not cheating. That's what I did too. So oh, did I did you? my okay. dark to light and then I did my dark to light over here. Yeah. And you just met them in the middle. Yeah, that's what I did. Perfect. So this is probably like one of the biggest things I do when we paint, and you'll see when we start, is I always put down my strong color first, wherever it is on my painting, and then I just use water to spread it out. So usually in regular painting, you use, you mix your paint with white paint to make it lighter. 
and to get that value change. But with watercolor, what we're doing is we're adding water to it instead. And that way it just makes it a little bit more transparent so you see the white of the paper through it more. Good, good job. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, three uh, washes. So we want a dark wash, and a, and a wash is just when you're laying the paint and the water down simultaneously. So this is a wash right here. Now we want it even. So to go, to make it even, you just go back and forth. So pretty much the opposite of what we were just doing, right? Because with this first one, you lay it down and then you spread it out, you leave it alone. To make it even, you just kind of go back and forth over it. And then that's gonna evenly spread out the color. And then I want you to do another one with a lighter wash. So see if you can get three different values. See if you can get a really dark, a medium, and a light. I'm gonna get a little bit more slate blue on mine. I really love the slate blue. Yeah, isn't the slate yeah. blue a really beautiful color? It's like almost a navy. But it kind of has like a purple when it dries. It almost has a purpliness to it. Yeah. It no, 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 just no white. Oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Don't stress, Casey. Oh my gosh, we forgot our raising the right hand. Okay. Our real page. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, after the warm ups, we'll do it. Okay. Because okay. that is such an important part. Uh huh. dab. Yeah, and then that's, yep. Is that too light? No. Like, look how light mine is. That's good. So I have a dark, I have a medium, I have a light. And then while one of them is still wet, so my dark one is still wet, I'm just gonna drop in water. Just to see what that does. <laughs> if your painting is too dry, like my uh, medium value wash over here, this is probably too dry to where if I put water on it, it's just gonna hang out right on that top of the paper. So if you're looking to do this type of texture within your painting, make sure that your wash is wet when you, when you first lay it down. Okay, and the last and thing- you could re-wet it. You can re-wet it, yeah. So if I wanted to just go back over, kind of rehydrate it, then you can drop in water. How did you drip, sir? You just got lots of water? And yeah, enough. this one I didn't really, I let my uh, brush get nice and wet, and then I dropped it in. Oh, there we go. You got it? So cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, isn't it yeah. Oh, it's like my favorite. This is called wet on wet. This is working with a wet surface and then adding wet paint or water to it. That's the wet on wet technique. And then the, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do just water. So just take your water. And I'm just, I like to do squares, but you can do whatever shapes. And then after you do a wet area, you're gonna take your paint and just drop it in. And you're just gonna watch how that spreads. So this is also a really cool thing where you can just get some cool. And if you want, you can, I'm gonna add a little different color in there, drop in some yellow. Oh, that's really fun. And just see how that spreads. <laughs> and plays with the other color. That. Somebody should be getting up close over here. This is really cool. Is, is mine too wet so it's not like spreading enough or? Yeah, if it will. Sometimes you have to help it spread a little bit. So even dropping okay. in just clean water in that. So Michael, can you get, so this was just dropping in color and then I dropped in some yellow and then I dropped water on top of that. And so I'm just getting some really cool textures going on here. Here, watch um, this, I'm gonna drop a drop just for you right now. Just, just for you. Just for you, here we go. Yeah, Ooh, so look at that. So That's cool. so cool. Oh, I yeah, I know. It's so therapeutic too to just watch it move. Gorgeous. Yeah. So cool. Okay. There is probably a video where that people are just spreading, dropping oh, paint. There is actually like a relaxing. Yeah, it's a thing. You should make it a bedtime. It's a thing. Bedtime it's a thing. Video. People do it. Uh, <laughs> you should make it a bedtime video. Oh, there goes the blue. Okay, so. I feel pretty good about my warm-ups there. Leave, keep your scratch paper near you because um, if we need to practice doing some thin lines or something, you'll have that handy. And for this bird, we have our outline. Wait, let's take it out. Yes, sir. Okay, everybody raise your right hand. Which camera am I looking at? This one. 
Okay, we're gonna do your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be brave. I promise to be brave. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. There you go. Now we are ready. Now, now it's time to get started on our bird. Now, I'm gonna uh, trace my bird right now, so is Casey. You can just get this printable off our website. Whenever we have printables, we make it available whenever we announce the project. So you can have those printed and ready. And um, you're just gonna follow the outline that I have for you. So you can start anywhere on the paper. How hard do you push? Are you... So you wanna not push too hard um, because we want our lines fine that lines. to be fine and we want them to be light. So if you like press really hard on your bird, your lines are gonna be super dark. And if that happens, just take your eraser and just kind of kind of erase over those really dark lines. Sorry, I keep breaking this lead. <laughs> I'm doing it too hard if I'm breaking the lead. So just follow the lines. If you miss a little, I know that while we get to the wing, there's a lot of lines going on. So if you miss one, it's not a big deal. Oh, Chad's on. Hi, Chad. Oh, Chad, said, I hope you're doing this. So <laughs> I hope he's doing this at home. I would love to see his bird. Do an amazing bird. Yeah, he would for sure. Yeah, he's really talented. I love seeing his paintings. I love seeing everybody's paintings, really. It makes me so happy when people send them in. So just follow. And so uh, when I do these outlines, I'm outlining the shapes of the bird, and then I'm outlining, I kind of section off where we have shaded or highlighted areas. So at the top of the head, you're gonna see this section at the top. That's because this area is our highlight. And so for a while, we're not gonna paint within that area at all. We're gonna kind of paint around it. And then this part of the belly, this area, this is where I know it's supposed to be the darkest on my belly. So um, that's why I kind of do these outlines to kind of know the shape and then also where to highlight or where to um, have a shadow. So Michael just... Karen says hi. Oh, is that my mom too? Oh yeah, yeah, that's, I have two moms. That's my other mom. Hi mom. You have three now. I have three. Don't forget me. I have four, cause Michael's mom. There we go. So much. Many, many moms. Many mothers. So how do you come up with what you're gonna paint? Like, did you just freehand this and think I'm gonna paint this? Or like, what's There's your a bird process? sitting at the window? Yeah. So usually I'll, so if I think like, I'm like, okay, I wanna do a blue bird, I'll look at Google images and then I'll draw one up. Oh. So I'm looking at one that has shadow and shading while I'm drawing it. And so I'll ha draw that up. And then I just do the outline and scan it for you guys. Awesome, yeah. yeah perfect. Because, I mean, um, some people have, are afraid that this is cheating, which I don't, I don't think using tracing paper is cheating at all. You'll notice that um, when you talk to professional calligraphers or artists, they, there's different tricks and tools you can use to get, make drawing easier. And I don't think that's a good enough reason to get people to not paint. So I just want to make it so you can paint. Well, and the point honestly is, is that the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll feel. Yeah. And if you do a bunch of birds and draw, pretty soon it'll become easier Yeah, for you'll you. feel more comfortable just but drawing I can it. I never sit down and draw birds, so I'm really glad oh, we, yeah. Can, yeah. we can have yeah, birds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you do your bird, and then we uh, have these erasers on our website if you want. They're gummy erasers, and they're really great because usually erasers degrade the paper, and that's how you get to erase things. But with these gummy erasers, all it's going to do is take off the, the uh, graphite or the pencil. So, um, and they're really... Um, they're really soft on the paper, so I'm just gonna try and lighten mine a little bit But uh, if you need an eraser, this is good because sometimes the ones on pencils like actually smear mm -hmm. And we do not want that because we don't want to smear our lines So I'm just gonna kind of lighten up my paper. Do you need that? Just right that, there yeah. yeah, sometimes when you use graphite paper if you have are resting your hand you might get a little bit of spot So you can just erase that Okay Let's get started. So I'm gonna start with my two brush this time. And I'm gonna use slate blue. So that's gonna, the darker one, right? That's the darker blue. And I'm gonna start by putting in my shadow here. So I'm gonna go kinda on the right side of this eyeball and underneath it a little bit. 
And then I'm gonna start doing the shadow on my uh, lines on my wings. So basically I'm just gonna start putting in the shadows first. So I'm gonna just kind of paint this area that I outlined and on this side. And then I'm just going to go in and start following the outline on my bird. Now when you paint, it's, it's usually easier if you start. For me, I like to start with putting the shadows in first or the darker areas and then going from there. And then I'm going to do it. Yeah, and then I'm just following the really thin lines that are kind of near the tail because those are all the feathers layered on top of each other. So each, and this is where birds get a little bit complicated, right? Because there's so many feathers, there's so many layers. So we have to show that there's a feather layered on top of that. And how we do that is we do shadow and highlight, and that's how we give depth to something. And then I'm going to do a little bit of shadow right underneath the beak, right at this corner here. Are these too white or do I need these guys darker? Should I dip more paint? Um, you can always, we're going to go back and oh. do it darker. This is just to kind of establish them. Okay. So don't worry about that if it's too. So I just did my lines and then I'm going to do a little bit right here at this wing. I'm not going to fill in this whole area because this is actually going to be yellow but underneath, before it turns yellow, there's some shadow on the blue. So I'm just gonna do a little bit right on the edge of the line here. Okay, good job. Well, clear to the tail. That's all right. <laughs> because that whole thing is shadowed, so that's just fine. And now I'm gonna switch to my uh, I have a six here, but if you have a four, you can use a four, or if you want to stay with your two, or even if you want to go wild and use your 10, that's cool too. We're kind of just going to start filling in the body. Now on this bird, so now I'm going to start using my Norway blue here. And I'm going to start where these lines are here, kind of in the middle. And then I'm just gonna take clean water and spread that up. I'm like, lines? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah. You might miss a couple lines on your bird. That's okay. Don't stress about that. It's not a big deal. Basically, we wanna make sure that the very top part of this wing is lighter than the bottom, which is why I'm adding water to it to lighten it up. And then we're just gonna start spreading our color around. And then you go straight water, right? So Yeah. That's... Yep, just use straight water to spread that color up to the top of the wing. Now, if you think that your color down here is not, not dark enough yet, don't worry about that. With watercolor, we do lots of layering. So we kind of are just doing the initial layer right now where we're establishing our darks and our lights and our mediums. And then as we go out and as it dries, we... add depth to our to our painting here and then so I did my wing and now I'm going to go to the back still using my Norway blue to the back of the bird and do the same thing where I do my dark line my initial paint where it's strong in color and then just rinse my brush and spread it out can you go over that again yeah so I do my dark line first here, so along the edge, kind of near the back of the body, that back body line, and then I just use clean water and, and is that spread Norway? it out. That is That's the Norway blue. blue. Yeah, it's this really beautiful, strong blue here. Now, I'm going to start going up towards the eye of my bird with this color, but remember to leave this highlighted section, the circle section, that's at the top of the head. Do not color that in yet. That's one of the last things we fill in because we want that to be almost white. And we're filling this in, right? Yeah, and I'm starting to kind of go, go around. This one's not right. 
Chad yeah. said that was such cool effect watching you push color back into the dark area. Thanks, Chad. Watercolor is so cool to watch. Okay. So for right now, we should have the most of the body, the top part, kind of kind of colored. Now, if you're where you are with me right now, you can you can catch up or follow along. All I'm doing is I'm just gonna start just with a really light wash. So I'm not really grabbing new paint. I'm kind of just using water and I'm just gonna start filling in the tail. And the reason why I'm not using heavy paint right now is because I wanna still be able to see these lines that I created. And if I use strong paint, then I might cover those up and I do not wanna do that. So I'm just kind of taking a wash right now, a really light wash and going over it. Kind of filling in my bird. It's kind of a straight line on my back. Where? This right here is. Oh, okay. Yeah, can I bring that? Mm -hmm. Actually, Michael, can you come over and I'll show people how to. So with her, she did her, her dark line and she added water, which is nice, but now we have a really strong line. And so to get rid of that, we're just going to blend, which basically means we use a damp brush and we just okay, kind of smudge those two lines together back and forth so it has a more natural oh, okay. bleed and that way you won't have such a strong line um, but like for me on mine here I kind of have a strong line um, but it's not going to bother me it doesn't bother me too much right now especially because I know I'm going to add more layers on top so I'm just going to leave it so it, it just depends on what you feel as you're painting if it's kind of distracting you from the overall thing then go ahead and blend it out if not, then you can just leave it and we'll go back to it. And is our wash continuing on down the tail? Yes. But don't get in the stomach area yet because that part, we're going we're gonna to basically just leave that white um, because that, the belly of the bird is actually white, but we're going to use gray to make sure that we see that there's shadow, which is going to give us the uh, shape of it, sure, the so shape of the belly. Sorry, I'm a little behind. So I just yeah. straight water and smear this all uh -huh. the way up to this? Yeah. Okay. So now, like, when you look around you, do you see things in terms of, like, how you could paint them? Like, when you see a flower, you're like, that would look really good painted. Or... Uh, sometimes, yeah. yeah. Like, I'll look at, um, especially, well, in Missouri, right, there's, like, such big sky and clouds. Mm -hmm. So um, I like to look, especially with, like, clouds and sky, I'll look at that and be like, okay, yeah. how would I go Are about painting? A cloud and We are. Not next week, sorry. It's no. not going to be next week. But we are... Eventually. Yeah, eventually we're going to do that. And I'm really excited to do it because clouds and skies are gorgeous. Um, but it's like a whole nother way to, to paint. So I'm kind of giving us a little bit of time first before we do that. Okay, so now we're going to do the belly while we let the bird dry before we add layers onto that. So I want to use some black. So I'm just going to take some water. And your water might be a little bit blue now. That's okay if there's a little bit of color in it. And then I'm just going to grab a little bit of black. Can they see me grabbing black over here? Yeah. So just a tiny bit of black here. Down a little bit more. Down? Yeah. Yeah. Even more. There you go. That's very good. Good. Okay. And then this shaded area, this is going to be my darkest part on the bird. So that's what I'm going to color in first. So I'm going to fill that in. Right using the, it's kind of a gray that we're picking up since we're not using pure black. So I fill that in first and then I rinse my brush for just clean water and I spread that out. Spread that out all the way to like the chest area. Now I don't think that I even painted right underneath the beak at all. I think I just left that the white paper because I wanted that to be highlighted. But you just want to make sure that this section is your darkest section on your painting. So I so usually I'll go back and layer a couple of times. So I'm gonna just add a little bit more. And the reason that we do this, right, we talked about this a little bit with the whale, I think, but when you have a round object, right? So let's say my hand is round right now. And if the light is hitting it here, this highlight, this is going to be the whitest part. And then on the sides here, it's going to be darker because it's turning away 
from the light, which is the same thing with this belly. So the top part of the chest is the highlighted part and then the belly is going underneath, right? Because birds, if you think of the shape of the belly, it goes underneath. So the underneath part of that bird is shaded. And that's how we get form. Okay. Looks good. Looks good. Yeah, good job. Okay. Now we're going to start doing some um, little thinner detail work. So I'm going to take my two again and I'm going to grab my Norway blue and I'm going to mix it a little bit with my slate just because I like mixing colors. There's no like um, formula for this one because it's just kind of playing around. And I'm going to start doing the line work underneath where the chin area of the bird meets the white part of the stomach. So if you look at the bird here, see how I have little lines going out? Do you see that? I must that? be missing a whole line section. That's okay. So you're just gonna like um, do an imaginary line like as if it goes here. So here, I can do that with gray. If you want, it's gonna go like this. Do you see that? Okay. So I'm just gonna take my two and I'm just gonna kind of do my really thin lines going down, almost like, like feathers here. And that's because we want this like kind of feathered texture going on to the stomach. So it's basically just like swish marks that I'm doing over and over again. If you need to practice swish marks, you can grab your paper. And so I'll just do them. So I'm basically doing this movement over and over, right? Kind of on top of each other, following the line. Kind of swish, 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 swish. Yeah, make that noise. It helps. Swish, 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 swish. swish. Okay, so your tummy might be a little bit wet still. Um, my, you could see here on my bird that it bled a little bit into my belly. That didn't, I think accidents like that are kind of really wonderful with watercolor, so it's not bothering me. But if yours is too wet, that it's spreading too much, then wait a second for your belly to, to dry before. Okay, and now I'm going to do another layer um, underneath my, my beak here. So I'm going to try and get this color to match up with the color I just laid down. So it's not like a white outline. So I'm just gonna kinda add some Norway blue with a little bit of slate blue underneath my beak, and then I'm gonna blend this out. Here. Ben says her paper lines are showing through her gray wash. So your paper lines might show a little bit through your wash. Um, usually when the painting is done and we do little textures on the belly, it's not going to be as noticeable. But if, if you notice that your, your pencil lines are super dark through the wash, then try and take an eraser and get them like barely there before we start painting. Because once you lay down watercolor or water over those, those lines, you cannot erase the lines. So we're going to keep adding layers to the belly so hopefully it will kind of cover it and it won't bother you. Um, but just for next time, if you're, if you're going to trace, then try and do a softer line. Should we go check in with everybody really quick? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Drea. Yeah. Okay. This is Drea's. This is looking really good. Oh, I'm sorry. taking my brush. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would think the only thing we'd want to do is we want to blend this. So this is a really strong line here okay. compared to that really highlighted wash right there. Right? So just take some water and kind of just blend that out. So it's more of a natural transition and not a strong line. And then maybe after this dries, go in and do a little bit more line work on the edge here. Cause this was really wet when it bled. So we have this cool thing, but we still want a little bit of feather texture here. So just after it dries, go back and do a little bit more line work there. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, Casey. Yeah, so I need to, cool. I know I need to blend this guy in. So yeah. with the same color, I just. Yeah, with the same color that you did these feather lines with, those look really good by the way. You're just going to match that color so this kind of area, the blue part underneath the chin, we want to match that color we just laid down. So and just start blending it. Uh-huh. Yep. And we want to get this dark. So we want it to just match. So here 
we kind of just want it to match the colors we laid down and then as we go towards the center it's going to lighten up to match this highlight oh. yeah okay jenny let's look at yours here Okay, beautiful, yeah. So you see that she did the shadow underneath here with the darker blue, but it's a really nice transition. There's not any strong lines, so that blended really nice. And I think that's cool too, how it just bled. Good job. Mm -hmm. I, think you're, I think you're on track. Okay, and Misty here, yeah, this is perfect. So it's a nice blend. We have a good transition here to the highlight. There's not any strong lines. And we have some good feather texture here at the bottom. So that's looking really good. And your tummy, yeah, your tummy looks good too. All right. So let's get back to it. So um, now I'm going to start on my feet. Now, here's the thing that, um, that's gonna really help elevate your paintings. So we, see, we have an outline for our foot, right? But when you do your feet, you do not want to outline the entire thing with black. If you do that, it's gonna flatten it, it's gonna look like a cartoon. So what I like to do is I, I'm gonna start with black here, kind of right at the very top of my legs here. So I lay down and it's the same thing. I lay down my color and then just where I have a little bit of a nail sticking out and where my foot is curved, I'm gonna put black there. So I have a nail here, I have a nail here, I have a nail here and here and then it curves here, so it's like where the toes meet, and here. And that is the only strong black I'm gonna put down on this bird. And then I'm just gonna use water. I'm gonna rinse my brush, and then I'm just gonna spread that color that I already laid down. Here. And I'm just gonna follow the shape that I outlined with it. And do you do, do you ever just do both feet while you have the paint Yeah, on you there? can do you can or do, do both you feet. Be, make sure the black is still wet so it can smear a little. Um for So if you want to do the black part on this other foot as well, you yeah, are Oh. You are more than welcome to. So you can see here, I do not have a strong black outline across my foot. I just want it on a little bit of the areas basically where there would be shadow. And just that in itself is going to make your foot seem more realistic than if you just did a complete black outline around the whole thing. How do you look? Because I think I went too dark. Okay, so if you start, if you cleaned your brush and you're starting to take this black down and it's so strong that it's smearing, then just clean your brush and try and lift off some of that color. So more at the bottom, because it's okay if it's super dark oh. up here. We want to keep that. But this is getting a little bit too dark for us, so we're just gonna lift, and then that's still dark, so you just rinse your brush, and you lift, take your mm. brush, and you just kind of lift color as you spread it. There. Oh, sweet. Okay. And then just follow the outline, very nice. And then I think on this one, I I mixed a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of my yellow with my black. And I'm just gonna drop that in a little bit. Add a little bit of warmth to our feet. Cause right now it's looking um, kind of bluish, right? Cause our water's blue. So I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of the daffodil yellow, a tiny, tiny bit, just for some warmth. And I'm saying warmth because colors are associated with temperatures. So red, orange, yellow, those are warm colors. When you see them, you think of warm things. And uh, green, blue, and purple, those are cool colors. So our foot is looking a little bit too cold. So I'm gonna add in a little yellow, give it some warmth. And you can do the other foot now too, if you want to do that. You're welcome. So you just start dark here. So right at the very tip where that foot meets the body. And then I'm just doing it where there's kind of nails. And then like where the toes meet together. And if you 
want your things to be even thinner than when I outlined, you're welcome to make your toes thinner that way. And then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here, just a little bit. Now, if you don't mind that your feet look a little blue, then you don't have to add yellow. <laughs> you don't have to do that if you don't want. My feet, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have very cold feet. Misty's, Misty, Misty's bird would have a pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> Misty's bird's toes would be so beautiful. Okay, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little bit more black right at the top there because I lost a little bit when I blend, uh, smeared it out. So don't be afraid to go back and add a little bit more color. Then I'm going to let that dry and I'm just going to see how that looks and if I need to fix anything, I will. Okay. So, yep, those look good. I'm going to take my, I'm going to go back to my four and I'm going to work more on my wing. So where we first did these lines in the middle of our wing, I'm going to do another layer, another darker wash on top. And then I blend it out towards the middle because we want this part of the bird here to be really light. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I did the first time. I do put my strong color in first. And for this, I like to do little um, swatches or like swoops here just to get that feathery texture on the ends. And then I take some water and I smear it up. Was the slate or the marley sorry? So I think uh, I use slate for okay. this part. So if the first round was Norway, this part is slate, or you can mix the colors a little bit. And then I just kind of want to blend that up here. And you can see already with that second layer of color that we're just adding a little bit more darkness and depth to it. And the reason why we're doing this, and this is actually another layer of feathers on top of here. So we have like a chunk of feathers here, then we have skinny feathers here, and then feathers here. And this is why birds are so fun to paint, but they're a little bit more complicated because all of those layers of feathers. Okay, and then I'm gonna go around the head and I'm gonna take some Norway blue and I'm still leaving this section white, but I'm gonna make the top of it right above it dark. Here. Because that is also rounding away from our light. And then I just kind of blend it out. Still leaving this section white. And then I'm gonna do underneath the eye also. So right, Sorry, I'm behind the no, leg. no, no, the legs held me up. Don't worry about it. So uh, let me move this so people can, I don't know what camera you have. Um, this part here, we're going to do another layer. Same thing we did the Just first time, but starting camp. there, main the camp. Top, top cam. Oh, top cam. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're starting here and then just adding color. I mean, adding water to spread that and, and uh, spread that out. Okay. okay. And then, yep, that looks good. Good job. Is that right? Yep, that's right. And where was spread now? Sorry, Paul. So just all the way up, but we want to leave this section. So let me put this over yep. the top here. Is this part of it? Should this part of his eye be dark too? Um. Yeah. So underneath that white mark, you can kind of start blending this up and around. So it's okay if it's dark around it. So you're blending this up, but we still want to keep this the lightest part. Okay. Okay. So as you blend, make sure you add water when you get to here. So it's a really soft wash. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start on my tail. So all these lines that I've already made, I'm going to just follow those. And for this, I'm going to mix a little bit of my Norway blue with my black so it's even darker. 
and then I'm just gonna follow these lines that I made. Now, when you do these, these tail lines, you're gonna want your lines, you're not gonna want this, okay? You're gonna want it to get thinner as it goes up, which is the wonderful thing with round brushes is you could do thick to thin. So you're gonna thick and then as you go in, you're gonna lighten that stroke like that. Oh, up just a little bit, okay. So if you do a thick even line across here, we're not super clear on the shape of the feather. So we're just gonna do a thick to more thin here. That kind of, that's just gonna give us a clearer idea that the feathers are pointed and layer on top of each other. So I take mine here and I'm gonna follow my dark spot line so I'm gonna lay it down and then I'm just gonna do a thin line across. And I'm gonna do that on all of my lines. That's just straight black? This is nor uh, uh, sorry, slate blue mixed with the black. Sounds like a lie. It's true, I promise those were the colors I used. Wait, start thin and then go thick? Start, start, start thick. thick and then go thin. And I'm just laying, because we're gonna add more layers to this and I just wanna make sure that I'm keeping those dark lines as I'm adding stuff, I'm not losing them as we do layers. So I'm doing a darker layer on top of it because we're gonna do another wash on top of all that. But before we do that, we're gonna add shadow to our uh, feather. So this bottom prong of this long bird, we're gonna color, I mix my Norway blue with black. And we're gonna do that. Now we're not gonna do the top prong because we're trying to show that this one is kind of like underneath it, right? So I'm gonna do the very bottom of the top prong and then the whole part of the bottom prong here. So then, so then it looks like this is on top and then this is kind of underneath, if that makes sense. Is it really called a prong? I don't know. I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Just wondering. It looks like a. I'm like that you know, sounded really. You're like, like that sounds like a right. Good, good dash. <laughs> so just darken that up here, and just continue that dark line. And that one goes this time to this top one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you're done with that, we're gonna clean our water because the next thing is we're gonna add the yellow part on our belly and we wanna make sure that that stays yellow. So, so we're, you put the finished picture right yeah. there where that other one is so they can look at that little, little So we're gonna go switch water, take a little bit of a minute break. Um, a bit. That good? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. You can take so a look at that while we do. real dark though. Mine still has that blue tinge to it. Yeah, if it's, if it's darker, still, yeah. Like no, that's that pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's Should enough. mine be darker? Yeah, I would add a little bit of more black to that. Oh, you have clean water right there, Jenny. You can use that one. She was drinking out of that one. This is going to be good. No, I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm definitely not surprised. As long as the baby won't be there probably for a long time. Yeah. You'll probably be in yeah. years. Ready for a swap? Oh, I'm sorry. He's ever watered this. <laughs> I give right. you so little. <laughs> Is mine still too light or is that dark enough? Leave that and then we can go back and make it darker if we need to. 
Because sometimes when it's wet, it's just really hard to make it dark when it's wet. You just got to miss a step somewhere along the way. I think you're good. Yeah, I think we're good. We like the yellow on the feet. Yeah, yeah, doesn't the yellow on the feet a little add? Yellow, yeah. That's okay. Um, yeah, your feet look good. Okay. And we're back. And we're back. Hello. <laughs> Hopefully that was a long enough break for you. Because <laughs> we're going to get to painting. All right. Uh, grab your yellow. So I'm using, I'm just going to use my a little bit bigger brush on this. But you can use your two if you want. Or four. Or four. Two or four or six or ten even. And I am mixing a tiny bit of my daffodil yellow with, that's good, with black. Okay, and then I'm going to go right underneath the wing. So right underneath here. And then I'm going to just take pure daffodil yellow and fill in the rest of the space. So I already have a, a space kind of outlined here with my pencil. I'm just gonna fill that in. There. Now, uh, if your yellow, if your blue is so wet and it touches, it's gonna turn a really cool green color. Um, I like that. Um, but if that bothers you, then just make sure your blue is dry before you add it. And then I'm gonna continue this yellow all the way to the bottom of the, of the belly here. Just with a wash? Oh no, oh, not out here. Not out here, not, I'm gonna follow this. Cause the yellow is really only right here. And then I'm gonna kind of, um, cause I'm just not one who loves like strong lines all the time. So I'm just gonna blend it a little bit on the edge here. And then that way it looks a little bit less like we're coloring in a coloring book. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that. So this one kind of comes in the back. Mm -hmm. And then underneath my wing, I still feel like my yellow should be a little bit darker. So I'm going in. Sorry, I'm not doing very good at making sure my bird is in the preview. I'll be better. I'm going to do another layer of this like ye darker yellow right underneath because we want it to be clear that this part of the bird is underneath the wing, so we're gonna cast a shadow, because that wing is casting a shadow. Just like that. And that is our yellow, and I want it to be brighter, so I'm gonna drop in even a little bit more brightness. Kinda in the middle. And I'm gonna blend it out a little. So you can kind of play with this, kind of finagle with it and see. Is that a word? That's yeah. a word, right? Yeah, that's a word. Yes. I'm going to blend that out. It's <laughs> my next Scrabble word. Okay. So then I'm just going to leave this yellow and let that dry. If you get it towards the top of your neck, don't stress. Nobody's going to be like, that's not a real bird. They're not going to notice that because the yellow's in this white part. So don't worry about if it kind of spreads a little bit more than it does. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to even do another dark, another darker color here. And for that, I'm mixing my slate with a little bit of black. And I'm going to bring in some Norway blue too because it's a really bright blue. So I'm just bringing all of the three colors in. And I'm going to do this again with the dark. And what did you say, that slate and That's black slate, and Norway? Norway, and black. Here. And then I blend. <laughs> blend out. But still keep the top of that wing nice and light. So if you can, try to not even touch it. Or if you have to, like right now, I'm gonna just use clean water and pick up some of that color. Just pick that up. And then I'm gonna do another of that same color mixture along the back of the bird. Add the black, then I use water and just blend it out so it's not such a strong line. All the way to the head.
And then you'll notice that at the very back of this bird, there's this section here that I'm not painting. And that's because on the bird I was looking at, it was like a white part or a, like a highlighted part. So now I'm just gonna take clean water and just do one little once over over top of that. Now if you, if you colored yours in, if your dark line went all the way to the edge, that's totally fine. You're still gonna, we're still gonna have the shape of our bird, so don't worry about that at all. Can we show that one more time? We were looking at the little thing. So this section here on the bird, I haven't painted yet, this little lined area. Um, so I just took my clean water and went once over it. Nope. My bird tried to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and now let's add a little bit more color to our tail feathers. So I'm doing a mixture of the slate blue and the Norway blue to get a darker wash. And I'm just going to start here kind of at the prong and move that color up. Now for my back prong, I want the very tip of it, like this very edge on the very left, far left side to be like a highlight, right? Because even the feathers themselves have form. So I'm going to leave that alone and paint around it almost. Now if you colored it over, that's okay. We'll take our bleed proof white and do a highlight on that after. So don't worry about that. So what would just go over it? Mm -hmm. Just go over it with your a little bit darker wash. Yeah kind of light. No, that's okay. That's good. Yeah. Is this under the tail part here? Is this lighter or keep that dark? Uh, we're going to keep, we're going to keep that dark. So have your wash go over that too. So here, I haven't really been coloring that in. I'm just going to spread that. And are we coloring this all the way down then? Yeah. Try and leave the top parts of this not colored, but if that's okay, we're gonna take our bleed proof white and okay. do a highlight on that. So don't, don't worry if you colored it in. Here. So now we have a pretty good shaped bird, right? We're, we have lots of light and dark on our bird, which is good because it's gonna give us our bird form. So now we can start doing kind of more of the detailing stuff on our bird. So I'm gonna to switch to my two and I'm gonna take black just pure black, and I'm gonna do the bottom of the beak. So just this little triangle that's right here, I'm just gonna do that in pure black. And try and get your beak, sorry, I'm gonna like cover it just for a second so I can get on top of it and really paint that. So just the bottom part of the beak is gonna be black. And then this is a good time if your feet are dry and the where the feet meet the bird, if your black um, bled out a little bit, you can add a little bit of darkness right at the top of that bird, of the feet. Okay. And we're gonna do the top of the beak, but we want the bottom of the beak to dry before we do that or else it's gonna get it's gonna to bleed together, we're gonna to lose our shape. So we're gonna start doing some feathers on our tummy. Can we fill in the eye? Uh, if you want to fill in your eye, you can, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit more black. I just thought I already have black on my brush. I know, you're so good about that. I'm so conservative. <laughs> <laughs> I like to just all right. go all over all the time. I'll so I'll follow you, I will follow you. So okay. I'll call for another checkup. Check oh, another checkup? Okay, we'll do that before we add that. All right, Drea, let's see how you're doing here. Okay, you, you got it? Okay, so this is looking good. What I would just say that what we need to do is your tummy have, has lost its like value, right? Because this part of the tummy was supposed to be the darkest, but now it's kind of all one color. So before we add the feathers, I would do one more layer where you do a little bit of gray here and blend it out because we want the bottom of that belly to be dark. And I think your feathers look good. When we go back and do the detailing on this, we'll practice the, because uh, we want 
I'll show you when we do this part, where, but we're gonna do another layer where we're gonna do our feathers okay. across here. But it's looking good. Okay, Casey. Okay, this is beautiful. Um, the colors are good. What I would just say is make this dark line, continue this a little bit and have oh, it, yeah. have. we don't want like a strong outline. Mm -hmm. So do it dark right above this white center and kind of blend it out to the back there. Okay, was this just Norway? Uh, just mix some slate blue with Norway for the dark for that. Okay. And then everything else is looking good. Yeah. Okay, Jenny here. Yep, your b bird He's looks still really blind. good. Blind bird. He's still blind. Well, that's okay. We're gonna add the black <laughs> in. Um, I think this is looking really nice. We kept the highlight. We're gonna add a highlight there. Um, I don't love this part. Why, what, what's bothering you about it? I, I think just the, just the, it doesn't. Uh, okay, I think what's happening sure. here, I think what's happening here is your, your bird lines of the tail feathers are connected to this part of the bird and we do not want those lines to connect. We wanna leave this area. So I would even take your brush and kind of blend out some of those lines okay. a, a little bit. Do you think they will? I think it's gonna help even if we highlight it a little bit. Because we want it to be light, middle, dark, light, middle, dark again. Okay. So we want that that pattern going on here. I think I had the same problem. Yeah, maybe just a little bit, just so we have a little bit more of a highlight underneath here. Because we want it to be clear that this is one layer of feathers, and then this is another layer of feathers, mm -hmm. and they're not one. So just take out a little bit of color there. But besides that, this is I think this blending along here is beautiful, and I like the dark underneath your your eyes there. So that's looking good. If to, to get rid of a strong line, you just take a clean brush and blend. Will that put those Smear colors it. too much or no? Hmm? Like, would, would that blend? No, 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 no. No. Okay, sweet. Okay. So now we're going to do the black part of our eye on the bird. Because <laughs> Jenny really wants to get that done. So we'll do that. I feel terrible. Just make sure that it's dry around your eye. If it's wet around your eye, do not do it yet. Okay, so you're gonna see here that there's like a circle and then a, a circle inside that and then a tiny little circle inside that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you guys all see that? Yeah. We are only coloring the middle circle. Not the tiny. Not the tiny and not the big around it because we want to highlight around our uh, bird's eye, which is why we are not coloring it. So I'm only doing the middle part of this circle here. With black, right? With black, just pure black. Now, for the middle part of the eye, it's the glare on the eyeball, right? It's the light hitting the eyeball. So we do not want the glare to be the very center. So let me see yours, Jenny, here. Okay. So I'm gonna bring this up so hopefully you guys can see it. So you're seeing her bird here, but her glare, I think, is a little bit too perfect of a circle and a little bit too in the middle. So it almost looks like another eye within it, right? So I'm just gonna... Oh. For technical difficulties. Okay. Is it sound? We're swapping, We're swapping audio. We still got it. We still got sound? We're gonna we just have to switch it over. Okay. We're switching over sound. Well we're pausing. Is that yours? Are we going completely? Okay, tell me when we're ready. Are we back up? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Hello, are we good? Can you hear me? Hello? Can hear me. It's, me. it's me. We're good? Okay. So we're back up. We're overhead camera, yeah? Okay. So her glare on her eyeball is a little too round and a little too in the middle to look like a glare. So I'm just gonna take my black and I'm gonna kinda just kinda cover it so it goes more towards the top. 
and that he way he looks happy. He looks happy. He looks like he's looking at something ahead of him instead of being like, "What is that right by my face?" That kind right. of expression. Okay. So if you see, let me see your guys' his glare. Glass face. That's good. I would make it even a little bit smaller. Okay. Like that. Smaller. A little bit smaller too. Okay. So there, now you have your eye. You feel better? I do. Okay, good. Winking, winking, and nod. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna do some feather textures on our belly. Now, if you wanna practice, it's basically those same swoosh lines um, that we do. Is that? Swoosh, 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 swoosh. Swoop. So I'm taking my gray and I'm gonna mix the tiniest bit of yellow in there just because color is good. Okay, and then um, the lines that I wanna make, let me get my reference. I have so many papers going on here. Is it this one? There he is. Okay. okay. <laughs> so my feathers are gonna like start right here and then I'm gonna like build off of this one point like that. Does that make sense? So it's not like this, okay? In some areas we can do that, but basically I'm gonna have a starting point do a little cluster? Do a cluster. So it's going to start in the same spot, but you're kind of going to go around it. Does that make sense? It's really hard to explain this using the right words. Just watch, just watch what I'm doing and do what I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's any more helpful. So we're just going to do, and we want, if you can get them as thin as possible, that's what we want. We want little little feather sections. We're just doing them all over the belly? We're just gonna do them all over the belly. Uh, layer them. Um, so don't, don't do like da 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 Okay, we don't wanna do it in a line. We basically wanna do one, nah, and then I'm gonna do one down here. <laughs> You're just too fast, you have to wait. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do it on my bird now so you guys see what I'm saying. Now hopefully your bird's belly is dry. I'm gonna start doing my feather textures. Do do do. These are more of a do do do. Okay, not a. Swish, swish, swish. <laughs> These are a do 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 feathers. I'm gonna get a little bit more gray. So I, I do my do do do. <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> Why aren't you guys making the do do do? <laughs> Do, 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 do. Okay, so this is looking good, right? Like, I'm like, oh yeah, cool. But for me, that's like a little too like, oh, I only have feathers here, I only have feathers here. So I actually like, after I put it down, I like to smear it. That's okay, just smear them. If your feathers are too, we're gonna smear. Okay, and then we're gonna do it again but not on the same spots. And that's how it, we make it seem like the feathers are layering on top of each other, is we do some, we kind of blend it out, and we're gonna do it again. Now it, it go up all the So way it the goes chest. all the way, yeah, to the chest. Now, because we just laid it down and it's wet, it might spread a little bit. So we're blending it around? Yeah, kind of blend it around. Because we're just, and you just do this a few, times where you do the doot 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 and then you blend it and then you do more doot doot doos and that's how we get these really nice kind of textures and uh, detail work that's not so like oh you just did three lines there that's how we get these really interesting uh, lines and textures and then that's okay just leave it see mine bled out too but I'm not going to stress about it it's like oh that's cool I'm just going to leave that in there I'm also going to do the bottom part of the tummy where it's kind of by the foot. I'm going to just do some um, feather lines here. So I just am doing some like swish marks. These are the swishes again. Swish, 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 swish. Just like that. <laughs> too wet, too dark, too. If your belly is too wet, just give it another minute, let it dry for a second. And then when I did my doot doot doos, I kind of lost my shadow on my belly, so I'm gonna put in another little shadow here. Are you doing it on the yellow too? Yeah, 
a little bit on the yellow, not where the yellow meets the blue, if that makes any sense. No. No. No, it doesn't. I did a bunch of do-do-do's she did, and then I boycotted. She <laughs> did her do-do-do's, and then she, she blended them out, and then when that dries, she's going to do a couple more do-do-do's. She's doing great, Jake, okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so this is a little bit too wet for me to do any more feather textures. I'm going to leave that alone just for a second. And uh, we're going to do some feather textures on this part of the wing here, this top part. So this is going to be black and blue. So I'm mixing my black and my slate blue. And I'm gonna start doing the like thin to thick feather textures just on the edge here. So it looks like the edge of a feather. So I just go thick to thin from the bottom to the top or the top to the thick on the top or thick on the bottom thick on the bottom do a th and then drag that line so it's thin it. going up here i'm going to come michael will you get the close up and i'm going to do a close up over here next to misty so she can see it. and that's just straight slate in norway yeah that one's just uh no that one's with black mixed into it too because we want this to be like the darkest part i told you i was messy with those uh, people no that's good i think they're so cool when they're wet too Okay, so for, for your bird here, mm -hmm. I'm mixing some black. So uh, you kind of have a straight line across yeah. here and we want it to be a little bit more uneven. Okay. So I'm gonna start down here and I, you start thick and you just do thin little flicks. Okay. Like around and then we're gonna let this area be up here and then when I get back down here, I'm gonna bring it down. Okay. So it's like some layers. More dimension, yeah. yeah. Like that. So you're gonna do thick and then thin. So okay. you kind of are like flicking your brush, flicking your brush up. Okay, cool. Just towards Thank the end. You. You're welcome. All right. So yours, Jenny, you're doing you're doing a good job not having a straight line, but your the colors you have is it they're not dark enough. Okay. So you need to get um, stronger stronger black and blue there to do those detail lines. Now, Dre, the same thing. You're running into the same problem where you're feathers here this is a straight line and we want them to so you see how this mm -hmm. so you see how this goes like that yeah we want to keep that same shape okay so so go down more well if okay this is where you need to just kind of adjust right so we can't really go down anymore if we go down two more we're going to run into this and we're going to mess that up so what i would do is i would do the opposite so i'm going to have the side so it's going to be this shape instead of instead of this shape does that make sense yeah so exaggerate this line a little bit more and have this area go down and be longer okay if it runs into that a little bit that's okay but we just want a little bit more detail line so we're going to do thick oh i need to get that wet if you if you go to paint and it doesn't move and you get this really rough texture that means you need more water on your brush so just do this shape kind of all the way. And then that's going to go up. That's going to go up. Here. So we want to just follow these lines like that. Just flicking? Yeah. Yep. Good job, Casey. Somebody yep. asked if you could show the feather marks on paper. Uh, yeah. That might be a while ago, but. I just saw it. Okay, I'm going to. Doot, doot, doot. Yeah. Oh, are we doing the doot 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 part? Or the feather marks? Or the or the swish? Yeah, do they want the doot 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 or the feathers? You need to ask them. Okay, doot 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 or feathers. Mom, that was my mom who asked that. Mom, do you want the belly feathers or the tail feathers? <laughs> so, am I blending these in at all, or do they just stay like that? Okay. So on the very edge, so. So on the very edge, they're going to be dark, right? But I would maybe blend this a little bit more okay. because we lost, so this is the side of our, let me move this over here. This is the side of your wing here. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see your pencil line through it a little bit more, but we lost that a little bit. So you would just do this 
like that, and then blend this out a little bit. So just take some blue and water and blend that. But we wanna keep that kind okay. of shape, that curve. Mm -hmm. So blend these guys too, just... Um, the lower tail feathers. The lower tail feathers, okay. Wait, which, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> There's so many, so many feathers going on. Okay, so for those, it's a thick to thin line. And um, we're, f we're going to thick to thin, thick to thin, thick to thin. So we're gonna do, so this kind of looks like the edge of a, of a wing, right? Because we're just doing individual lines like this that kind of are even, they're not like this, okay? Because this doesn't really read feather, the edge of a flower, uh, ed edge of a feather. <laughs> what did I say? Edge of a feather. <laughs> Edge of a feather. I think I started to say flower and feather. It's been a long day. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back lower on the other side. I wanted to make. So they're kind of, they're kind of these swish marks here, like that. Okay. Okay. And that's where on your feather, this feather wing, yeah, this yeah. one right here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now, so I got my bird. Uh, my belly's kind of dry, so I'm gonna do a couple more doot doot doos. <laughs> Is your guys' belly dry? You can do a couple more. Just a I couple more. I don't think more. I can handle any more. Like, I don't think you need any more on yours. You have some really <laughs> nice, no, but look, look at. Um... Oh, you just, we just ripped. Oh, thank you. So, oh, wow. so she has, she has some really nice, so you can tell that there were layers underneath that were wet and then she did a couple dry ones on top, doot, doot, doot. a couple dry doot, doot, doos on top. And that's great. You might want to do a couple right in here. Cause I don't see any details right there, but besides that, that looks great. So I'm going to do a couple doot, doot. Now, what's this little do, white patch do, we've do. still got sitting right here? Okay, we're going to get there, okay. Jenny, okay? I maybe we're... I forgot it. No? So... <laughs> I need you to calm down. Okay, I need okay, you to sorry, just sorry, wait sorry. for a second. I'm waiting. Maybe. So I'm just going to do a, a couple more section of little detail fe feathers on my belly here. <coughs> and then using that same color, I'm going to do a little bit. I'm going to follow. Okay. So I don't want the chin of my bird like this part of my bird to look like this, right? I'm not gonna just follow that straight line. I want it to be clear that there is feathers there too. So when I do that line, I'm gonna do my little swishes going down like that. <coughs> so it's not a straight line, it's little swishes on the end. And um, that gives our bird like a free belly and chin, which is what we want. And I'm gonna do it a little bit on the belly too. Not the whole line, right? Because we are we don't want to outline here. But just so we know that it's furry on that belly. Yep, very nice. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the top of my beak. So I'm grabbing black. And for this bird on the top of his beak, he has a couple feathers sticking out. So it's gonna be like, do, 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 like that. So just a couple sticking out at the top of the beak. And then after that's done, I'm just going to take, I'm gonna rinse my brush and just color in the top of the beak with the light wash and let it bleed in a little bit. So it's gonna be dark here. You did straight black on top? I did do okay. straight black, yeah. If you wanna mix it with a little bit of blue, you're welcome to. Yeah, we won't make fun of you. Sorry, I did not register what you said. <laughs> okay. And then we're gonna do some um, textural feathers on the bird body. So before we do that, let's fill in that white space. 
So you're just gonna take water, just a clean brush water, and just spread that just once. Mm -hmm. So it still is this really nice on the, on, the on the top of the head, that white area. Yep. Like I just just water said? Yep, just water and spread it. Yep, that's all you need to do. We're gonna leave that there. And then we're gonna take our two and we're gonna do little feather marks around the eye of the bird. Now for these, it's gonna be something more like uh, just dashes around. Okay. And, and let's see that bird up close so we can look at him. Michael, do you wanna come in close for that? You do, Michael. Yes, you do. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes to that question. Sorry, he's getting that. Okay, so if you see on this bird, I have little feather textures, but they're really just small dashes that as I go out, they get a little bit bigger. Do you see that there? So by the eye, they're gonna be really, so by the eye, they're gonna be really tiny, just short little things. And then as I go out, they're gonna get a little bit bigger and thicker, longer. Can you see from that angle very needs, well? Needs to be closer. Here, let me turn this around. Is that better? Those little dash marks here. That's what we're looking at. So that, that. What's, what's your color with that? I'm doing like mostly black and a little bit of blue. Probably this guy, right? There we go, yep. Yeah. Okay. Can I see him close? Yes. I just wanna get a look in my brain. So we're just going to around the eye, do those little dashes. Oh, I still have like a really dark. Yours is not really dark? No, I still have like the, like a patch. Okay, if your, if your eye sockets around the eyeballs are still kind of colored in like this, blocky, I guess I would say, blend it out. What about, what about, when, the, what about the white up in the eye? When in doubt, blend it out. Uh, oh wait, never mind. You're getting to it. <laughs> <laughs> you are uninvited. Fired. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Who invited her on this show? <laughs> Who invited you to be here? No, I'm just kidding. I would just blend it out, and I'm I'm gonna leave a little outline around that, but just blend that out. Okay, and then probably wait for it to dry. And then do wait for it to dry, and then do your little little stripy dots. I keep asking. I'm like, wait, no, wait. You're like, what about this? It's like, give me a second. Okay, so I'm doing little textures and then I'm gonna do a couple on the back part. These are gonna be um, yeah, like I long. It's like I've put mascara on my bird now. <laughs> just little random long textures, just a little on the head and kind of on the back. And those are just long little stripies here that we got going. And then if the top of your head is dry, we're gonna do those same kind of dashes going up the head of our bird. So I'm doing a mixture of single ones, and then as I go higher, I'm gonna do little groups. I'm gonna do the, the, the what did we decide? The da, da, da. Yep. Those are gonna go up around. And then if you have this white space by your beak, like I do, which I don't really know how that happened. I'm just gonna blend it in. So right now there really should be no white spaces on your bird except for right around the eyeball and in the eyeball. That guy is well, this we wanna problem. leave. This is on purpose. Oh, like, okay. um, oh. yeah, we're using the white of paper, like white paint. So we're leaving that white, okay. And then I'm gonna go in and do one more layer on my tail feathers of the dark, cause it got a little, um, it bled a little bit with my last wash over it. So I'm gonna, one more time with the dark color, I'm gonna do those lines. Go over them one more time so they're nice and sharp. I 
have too many black lines on my face. No, but I think the ones by your eye are a little bit too big. Right here. So if you want to blend those out. Okay. So, yep, that looks good. I'm gonna actually add some, cause the feathers I did by the nose, I just did, or by the beak, I just did black. And I don't really, I want there to be a little bit more color. So I'm doing blue feathers just right on top. The Norway blue. If you don't mind that your feathers are just black, that's cool. Mine are kind of gray. Yeah, if you want like a little bit more color in there, you can mix. Ooh, misty. Look at that. That looks really nice. You have it on? Yeah, look at look at these nice feather lines here on top of this really beautiful wash. It goes from light, medium to dark, and we have these detail lines, and then she has her feather textures in here. Very nice. And then this goes from light, medium to dark, which, so this clearly looks like one layer on top of another layer, which is what we're going for. So awesome. great job. That's okay. The belly is supposed <laughs> to be a little so bit messy. Never noticed never the belly. Noticed. <laughs> that part. He's been rolling in it's fine. That's fine. You know what? Don't worry about it. Okay. Now, um, so we darkened our lines a little bit. Don't worry. We're kind of at the very end here, you guys. We're just going to do... Um, I'm going to blend, I'm just going to take clean water and blend around my eyeball because I just want a very soft wash, very similar to what we did at the top of the head. So just kind of blend that white circle around it, but leave the glare inside the black circle. Don't touch that. We want that to be pure white. We're just blending all around the black part. Okay. And then now we do our fine little detail lines with our white. So let me, let me put some white on here for you guys. There's white. There's white Misty. Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. And then here's our white there. Okay. So now I'm gonna take my two to brush, if you have a liner, you're welcome to use a liner. And I just am going to want to highlight uh, right next to these dark lines on the tail. So you can see here in this painting how I have, and it's not on every one, it's just on some of them. I do a little bit of a white highlight on there and that's gonna give me a stronger look of layers. So I take my white and then I'm just going to Kind of up. On the top of the tail? Yeah. Like that. So just by adding that highlight, so right, so these ones right here. So we're doing this part. So see those white lines mm -hmm. that I have going? We're going to do that same thing. And just by adding a little bit of highlight, it just gives us a little bit more form to our feathers on our birds. And then I'm going to do a little bit of highlight on the prong of the tail, like that. Yeah. Yep. Is that enough? I would even go wider. So there was probably a lot of water mixed with yours. So I'm going to move it over here if that's okay. Okay. So here's her feather. She did a highlight, but um, I think there's probably just a little bit too much water. So it kind of turned a little bit gray. And I'm just going to do it over again with a more of a white. And then right on the top here. And then I like to do, and if you really love your tail feathers and you're like, they don't need a highlight, you don't have to worry about it. I just like adding little details at the very end, little finishing. And then I'm gonna do a couple white feathers on the belly. So Misty, if your tummy is looking too gray, this is where you can take your white and lighten that up. So I'm just gonna do um, my doot doot doos though, using the white kind of across the belly kind of more towards the top here because this underneath part is supposed to still be pretty shadowed. 
So it's just kind of random throughout. But I'm gonna leave this area mainly the same color because we I want it to be clear that that is shadowed. Here. Yep, do the do do do's. Yep, very nice. And then the last highlight I'm gonna do is right on the top of the beak. Right along the line. I'm gonna do a little highlight right on the top. Should I have a black line on there? Where? On the top of my beak. So I'm gonna do, so I do my highlight along kind of where the bottom and the top meet, so this. Oh, that part. Okay. That part. So along like there. Okay. Okay. Feathers on um, your belly. You're so much braver than I am. Don't be scared about the feathers. And the, the thing with feathers that we you need to remember is it's gonna look a little bit more realistic if you change the length of them as you go down. So the feathers towards the top of my bird, like right underneath his chin, those ones, my doo doo doos are a little shorter. And then as I go down towards the like the big part of the belly, my doo doo doos get a little bit longer. And it's, a, it's that same idea around the eyeball. We start small and then as we go out, they get bigger. And then I'm gonna add just a tiny, tiny bit of a highlight right here on the top of the shoulder of my bird and then blend that out. Cause I want that part to be really light. So if yours is really light, then you don't need to do this. But mine, I just wanted a little extra. Here, like Mine's that. pretty light. Yeah, if yours is light, then don't worry about it. Missy's yours is pretty light. You probably don't need to do it. And that is- now, now for the tree branch. Oops. <laughs> we, need, we need a tree branch to sit him on. Do we though? <laughs> Do we though? <laughs> I never add tree branches to my birds like ever. As you can see, ever, ever never once. No. So as you can see, mine's just hanging out in the air because I like that though. I like, sorry, I just tapped my mic. Hopefully that didn't make a big sound, but um, I like things just floating in space. I don't know why it's weird, but if you do want to add a branch, what I would do. Jenny, look at what you're having me do. You don't have to. You don't have to. Don't do it, we're good? <laughs> you can do it on mine, because mine need, mine is like, okay. mine's like hanging there. <laughs> you feel like it's messy. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mix a little bit of the yellow with the black. Okay, and maybe a little bit blue to get a green color, so it's like <laughs> a mossy branch or something. Oh no, what happened? I just threw my Sweet paper. That so it's it's fine. Okay. So I'm mixing a little bit of the daffodil yellow with some black and a tiny bit of blue. So it's like um, a dark green. <laughs> like puke. Yeah, sure. Okay, and then um, scoot my bird up, good. Okay, and then I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna go underneath. Okay. My bird is so happy right now. Your bird is so His happy. His foundation is firming up. And then I'm gonna have like a little branch going this way and then like that, okay? And then you're just gonna take a wash. Oh my gosh, I would have never thought that. You are so spoiled. I'm making your own little branch for you. And you just add clean water and let that blend kind of like how we did in the warm up exercises because you don't need to draw a line at the bottom of your branch. You don't need to outline that bottom line because if you do, it's gonna flatten it. So we really just want the wash to kind of bleed out at the end, get underneath the feet so we know that it's standing on it. And that's all you really need. Oh, that's awesome. And if you wanna add a little bit of shadow right where the feet are. So Anybody else want your branch? She's available. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it to, mail it in. I'll paint the branch. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little bit of shadow underneath your feet. So it's like on there, you know? It's like this bird is here to stay. Like that. All right. That's awesome. There we go. All right, how's everybody doing? Yeah, let's, let's raise our paintings up. Where did my bird, oh, I, I gave it to you, okay. 
we're going to go through, show everybody. Now everybody's is going to look different. That's the amazing thing about art. And be kind to yourself. Okay. They look beautiful. <laughs> no, they look, Casey, yours look so good. What are you talking Andrea, about? I love your feathers. That's beautiful. Yeah, They're your tail great. feathers look great. And this is our, this is our happy blue bird, bird. So if you painted this, please send it in. I would love to see it. If you post it on Instagram, just tag us in it. Let's go make art. Or the hashtag is watercolor bluebird. So hashtag it, tag us. I want to see it. I'll tell you how much I love it. Hashtag wet belly. Hashtag wet belly. <laughs> is that the trending hashtag on this? <laughs> and um, yeah, so please post it. If you do add a branch on yours, I want to see it. Maybe you add a little bit of flowers on your branch. Take a little bit of what we did from the last couple of weeks. And then our next project we're going to do is a floral wreath. And these are so fun because uh, we're gonna do a mix of leaves and flowers, but you can use this over and over again using just leaves or just flowers. And you can even let, write a little word in here like love or hope, and then like frame it or something. So reeds are really great because you can do a lot of things with the center of them. So thank you so much for painting with us. And um, if you want feedback or tips, you're welcome to email your artwork in at hello at let's make art dot com and i can give you feedback if that's something you're looking for so that's awesome thanks Yay. good job everybody okay, we're gonna leave the finished one up for a while okay we'll, just tell them. we're leaving this finished one up for a little bit i'm gonna do both of them because you're gonna see is that good can you see both of them yeah you can push the tray out a little more okay like same person painted this but it looks a little bit different and that's cool Okay. Good work, team. Good, good job. Oh, any? any I didn't even ask that while I painted. What? Oh, any questions? Yeah. Oh, no. Amy Davenport enjoyed the class. Yay, Amy. Amy. Natalie Earnhardt just joined. Oh, Natalie. Hello, welcome, and goodbye. <laughs> we gave Holly Hansen a super zoom. Super Kelly Zoom. Sullivan Welty. Doing great. Got it. Cool. That was fun. That was fun. Cat always likes to do. Are we still on? Yeah. We're still on. Here, let me, I'm going to turn off my mic. Cat likes to do the animal.